Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. That's right, we are back in the world and we are back at home after a long days, and I mean days plural, adventure in our last episode. And since then, I have been pretty darn busy getting ready for this one. You can see by the date in the upper left hand corner, it's been a couple days. I think it's been three or four days. And I've been hard at work gathering some supplies and making materials to build with. I have been gathering some firewood, just a little bit of it. And while I've been here, this skep has actually become full of honey. Now, we are not going to harvest this skep right now because if we break it, we may get the bees angry at us and then we have to go and put another skep down in the woods way over that away and wait for another swarm of bees to inhabit it. We're going to use this one as the seed for our bees later in this episode. But speaking of this episode, what are we doing? What are we doing, Kurzar? Well, we are upgrading this house a little bit because while this is a significant upgrade over our original dirt castle, and yes, it was a castle, it's still a little bare bones. We have jagged roofs up there, and this jagged roof where it's sort of very blocky, very other block gamey if there were other block games in the world, which there aren't. And so I wanted to sort of spruce this up a bit. And one of the things that I really want are some windows. Now, given our current stockpile of window materials, I know we're not going to be able to fill all of the windows, but I think we can fill this window and maybe this window. And we'll still have a bit of a draft here from the north and south, but at least these two windows will be clear and we'll be able to stand here and look outside when there are drifters around without being pelted with stones. So, what do we need to make glass? Well, first we need quartz. We have some of the clear quartz in this basket, but this makes that sort of foggy quartz, and I'm not a big fan of that for our final house. It looks sort of primitive. In this basket, we have 24 regular quartz chunks. Now, we had about 19, I think, after our trip to our house. I spent most of the last night in-game panning through gravel to get the last five or so uh, pieces of quartz to use for today. So we need quartz, and then we need to be able to smelt the quartz. But look at that temperature. It takes 1,350 degrees Celsius to smelt this stuff. And our best fuel is peat, which caps out at 900 degrees. We will need something significantly hotter. If we look in the handbook, we can look up different kinds of coal. And there are basically four main kinds. One is not shown here. We have brown coal, which caps at 1100 C. We have black coal that burns at 1200. We have anthracite, which burns at 1200 as well, but for longer. And we have charcoal, which burns at 1300. But that's still not good enough. So how do we get a fire hot enough to smelt quartz? The answer is with a bloomery. A bloomery is a very low-tech oven or smeltery that basically uses clay bricks to reflect heat and, and trap it so that your material inside gets to a higher temperature than it normally would given the fuel that you're using. And that is why I have been cooking up these fire clay bricks. We can turn these into bloomeries and then we can get to higher temperatures with them. To make a bloomery, all you do is you take your fire clay bricks, drop them in your crafting grid like this, and you have your bloomery base, and then you also need a lid, or a chimney, I should say. And there we have the basic parts of a bloomery. Now, something to note that's important about the bloomeries is that once you place them down, you don't want to break them until you're done using it. And you do have to break it each time you smelt with it. Unlike a lot of other fire-based features in this game, such as uh, fire pits and pit kilns, bloomeries don't carry the risk of setting your house on fire, but for roleplay's sake, let's just put this out here under the awning like that. And there we have our bloomery. So next, we need our quartz, and you can add items by just holding right-click one at a time, or if you crouch, you can add five at a time. And 24 is the maximum number of pieces of quartz that you can put into one bloomery at a time. Now it's asking for fuel, and if you look at the little overlay, it wants specifically some kind of coal, specifically 
black coal, charcoal, coal cokes, or anthracite coal. We have none of that. So how do we get coal or charcoal? Well, coal must be dug out of the ground. We don't have a pickaxe. Yes, we have one, but no, we don't. So that leaves us with charcoal, which is why I've been gathering these stacks and stacks of logs. We're going to make a charcoal pit, and then we're going to pre-burn this wood in an airless environment and turn it into charcoal. I think I want to put our charcoal pit right in here. It's close for convenience, and we won't be downwind of it. But I think I want to flatten this land off first, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, with that done, let's get to making the pit itself. Now, it doesn't technically need to be a pit. You can just make an above-ground building out of any sort of dirt or stone material. I think ceramic may also work. Uh, but I like to have it actually in the ground because it is supposed to be, you know, a charcoal pit. And I have a design that I like to use. It works well for me. So I'm going to use my patented Corazar style 5x5x3 five by five by charcoal pit. And let's get to digging. And there we have it. It's not quite complete yet. There are a few touches that I will add later as we get more material to fill in the walls and to redo the floor. But for now, this will do. Except for that grass. Let's get rid of you. Okay, let's get burning. We are going to take almost all of this wood and we're going to throw it in that pit. Now, I am going to sort of resize it in there by shoring it up with some dirt because we don't have enough to fill out that entire charcoal pit. And then we'll get to it. So let's hold shift and right, hold right click to pick up four at a time. Eight at a time. I stand corrected. Okay, let's get stacking. We're going to only fill up a small corner of this area, but that will let us sort of box it in with dirt and then we can light it up. So let's go ahead and set these down. And then you need to pick a spot that is touching a block of wood, I think. You might be able to set them offset, but I'm not sure exactly. You take a piece of grass and start a fire pit. Put four pieces of wood in. And then you need to box it in. So I'm going to box it in like this. You need to make sure that it is fully covered, so that there are no air blocks you don't pick up the wood by accident. Like so. So it says charcoal pit and it is unlit. So we are going to swap hands. We're going to light it. And then we have 29 in-game minutes for the pile of nights. We need to oops, put a dirt block right there. And then we can actually confirm that it's burning properly in about half an hour in-game, it'll show up the smoke rising from here. However, there is a rift over in the distance, which means drifters, which means we're going to head inside. Plus, it's too dark to see the smoke anyway, I think. In the meantime, why don't we take this opportunity to start working on our house a little bit more? I was thinking... We got a whole bunch of walnut logs from that one tree I took out in the middle of the night. So why don't we use some of those to shore up our roof support? Because we have, you know, no support beams in here. Let's go ahead and add a couple.
Okay. Well, now we have a partly finished loft over here. And we have the start of a fireplace. And I'm going to go out there and finish that chimney. And let's smooth out the exterior of the roof a bit. That looks much better. Or it's starting to. We'll make some more improvements to it. And there we have it. On the outside we have some nice smoothed over roof lines. I want to do something about this sticking out. I might have it protrude a little bit more, but I'll play with that a little bit later. We have a chimney, which you'll see doesn't quite reach the ground. Why doesn't this reach the ground? Well, because I have some plans about what to put here. And it involves having a sort of raised area of land here. And on the interior, we now have a loft with a floor, we have a fireplace, and we have some support beams made of walnut logs. And I had to make some concessions about the interior roof lines because if I didn't leave them blocky here, I'd only have a one block wide walking path to and from the bed. So I figured we'll just leave it like this for now and we won't care eventually what to do about this outside area. I was thinking, we have a lot of berry bushes. Not those. We have a lot. 16, 64, more stacks. We have stacks and stacks of berry bushes all scattered around these chests. And I think it would be cool to make a berry vineyard. I realize these are currants, not grapes, but if you squint a little bit, they're all just blocky pixels, so they might do the trick. I think I want to put it right out here, adjoining the house. Oh, by the way, I realized while working on this that I kind of built the house lopsided. I wonder how many of you this has been bothering, but these windows are not symmetrically placed in the house. Now they are. Much better. So let's get to building this little raised bed with our new vineyard in it.
that started, why don't we go check on that charcoal? It should have been over 18 hours by now. Here goes nothing. Hey, there we go. Now, charcoal is best harvested with a shovel, although with a stone shovel, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But we'll do it anyway. Now, each stack of logs you place down will turn into a variable amount of charcoal. You'll notice that although, except for this part right here, all of these layers were stacked two full blocks high with wood. But here we have seven layers of charcoal on top of a block of eight layers. We have eight and two, we have just eight, and then the single layer we had has just five. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. In fact, it's nowhere near a one-to-one -one ratio. But it's a good thing, for now, that we don't need a whole lot of charcoal. Okay, with 38 charcoal in hand, let's go smelt some glass. So a full 24 chunk full of bloomery of glass only takes, I believe, six charcoal. There we go, I can't add any more. So let's move these out. And then we can just crouch and right click. And hold it for a moment. And there, once it starts smoking and sparking, it is lit. And this will burn for, I believe, about 10 hours before it's ready. And then we'll come check out it then. In the meantime, let's get a little more work done on the vineyard this evening. been a long night of work, but we got the vineyard put together. Check this out. So we have four rows, each two tall and eight blocks long of blackcurrant bushes. So we have a full stack of 64 bushes here. And we even have the sort of vineyard frames. Had to jigger them a little bit to make them fit the area, but I kind of like it. It looks, it looks like it was made to fit what we had on hand, which is kind of how it really is thrown together with fences we made with an axe instead of a saw. So with that done and out of the way, let's check this guy. It looks like he's still burning. Maybe the 10 hours thing is a bit outdated. I'm not sure. We'll come back in a little bit. After I finished the vineyard outside, I went and did some organization in the house and got my inventory sorted out, ate some food, and came down here and replaced all of our dirt walls with some dark mud brick. And I think this looks much better. With the vineyard going, and the glass still smelting out here, I think it's time for the other project I had in mind today, which involves these bees. I want to make a small apiary. I'm thinking right over here, maybe come out here and take out one of these maple trees, or maybe just plop it right in here, right in here somewhere. Yeah, I like it right over here. So I'm going to take out probably both of these nearest trees here. We'll need the wood anyway in the future. And I'll start getting together an apiary. The first thing you need for an apiary is, of course, bees. But you need some more things, too. After all, what do bees need? They need flowers. Now, on top of that, you also need some kind of protection, because there are raccoons that will very happily come and destroy your skeps when they are populated with honey 
So we need some flowers. Let's go see what we can find. Now bees in Vintage Story are very picky eaters. And while you can just plop down any old flower in front of them, the best flower of them all to use is, of course, lupins. Just kidding. You can use any flowers, they don't care about lupins. I just like lupins a lot. So let's go gather some flowers, and we'll bring them back to our house, and start on our little apiary. Now, I recommend, at minimum, about eight flowers per skep. Some players may tell you to go more. I've had perfectly fine luck with eight flowers per skep. So we'll start with that as a minimum. And here we have where we'll be keeping our bees. Similar to the farms, I have pushed back the dirt a few blocks so that any raccoons that are creeping out from the forest can't get a running start and jump their way in, although we can. And next we're going to show how we place the skeps. I like to keep them at least one block off the ground, but our seed skep I keep a little higher to remind myself not to actually harvest it. I'm going to grab some logs from here. And the spawning conditions for raccoons are that they must spawn next to logs. However, this only applies to logs that are grown from trees. Logs that are placed by hand do not cause raccoons to spawn. So we're going to come in here and find the center, which I believe ought to be here. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Perfect. Put one there, put one there, one there, 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 and there. Bees don't particularly like having their colonies messed with. So when you break their skeps, sometimes they'll get angry and they'll swarm and they'll follow you around for about a solid minute, stinging you for a little bit of damage each second or so. It's a very cute sound, but it's very annoying. And when you have like five swarms on you, it can get pretty dangerous. So to counteract that, we're going to make some straw dummies. And I like to place them behind a couple of these logs set into the ground by a block so you don't see them as much. And straw dummies are made with a stick and two hay bales on top of it. We get one straw dummy. I don't think they stack, do they? No, they don't. So we need to drop these guys in our inventory and then go drop them in their holes. And done. Let's go get our flowers and then we'll get our bees. And like that, we have a field of flowers. And we can boost this if we need to by putting more flowers outside the actual perimeter of the garden. I don't really find it's necessary, but it can be pretty. So let's go ahead and just spend the rest of our flowers doing that. And there we go. Let's go get our skip. And once again, don't forget that in order to pick up your skip, you need to cycle down to your bag, put it on the ground or in your inventory if you want to, and then we can pick this guy up. Now, moving a skep will actually cause it to reset its honey timer. So this honey that was in here is no longer going to be available to us. It's just sort of gone. That's okay. We'll get more. And then we place our skep there. As you can see, it has yet to see the flowers, but it is populated and it will grow very quickly, very soon. 
Let's go check on this glass. I think it ought to be done by now. Yes, we are done. Okay. Let's break these. And when you break your bloomeries, both the chimney and the base, you'll get back typically fewer bricks than you put into them. So you will need to go and restock all your fire clay at some point, but as long as you make them in big enough batches, you'll usually find you have about three quarters of return on that investment. And with the 24 pieces of quartz that we put into the bloomery, we now have 12 perfect cubes of glass. Now don't ask me how that primitive bloomery and random quartz we shoved in there made perfect cubes of glass. It just did. It's how it works. And I want to put glass in this window because, especially in high rift activity days, drifters could spawn out there and see us and throw rocks. So I want to just patch this guy up. That's one window. And I think since we have six more left, I want to fill in this window because, again, drifters could hang out here on the planters and throw rocks inside the house. So let's pick up these flower pots and we will replace them with some glass. There we go. Much better. It would have been nice if I could have found enough glass to fill in all these windows, but this is a good start. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And now in order to populate more skeps, all we have left are the actual empty skeps themselves. And that's why I've been collecting these cattails whenever I can. And that's why I brought those cattails back to her home and planted them here in rows, because we're going to need a ton of cattails. Each skep takes 16 cattails and two pieces of blue clay. The blue clay is whatever, but the 16 cattails can be a real killer. Now, when you break a skep, you will get some back. I think it's close to half as many cattails as you put into them, but that's still a significant investment. It means we're going to be spending a lot of time cutting cattails. Later, this will get faster with the scythe, but for now, the knife it is. All right, skeps acquired. Let's go drop them in place. And done. In probably five or ten days time, I think most of these should be full of bees and maybe even some honey. But we'll come back to that when those are ready. For now, we're going to call this job complete. Anyway, everyone, that's all we have time for in this episode. We did a lot today. I hope you enjoyed this stay around home building focused episode. Let me know what you think in the comments. My name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.